Hello, welcome to Baltic World, the premier channel discussing news and important issues facing Northern, Central and Eastern Europe. My name is Chris Byrne and as all of you will be aware, there is a escalating David and Goliath battle between Lithuania and China over diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Now in the latest development, the Slovenian Prime Minister has announced his intention to break for Lithuania. That is, Slovenia will open its own trade offices with Taiwan under the Taiwanese name. So I will go into some articles about this and whether or not I believe this means the EU as a whole is shifting towards Lithuania's position or whether there are still some major barriers. We'll go into the analysis. Uh, before I do, if you find value in these discussions, please remember to like the video. It helps grow the channel and also consider sharing. And if you wish to, you can support us on Patreon. The first article I have is from Politico by Stuart Lau. It says, Slovenia has become the latest tiny European country to take a pop at giant China over Taiwan with plans to strengthen trade ties with the self-ruling island. The Foreign Ministry of Taiwan on Tuesday confirmed plans with the Balkan nation to set up trade offices in each other's territory, announced by Slovenia's Prime Minister Janez Janša on Monday, a move that threatens to fuel ongoing EU tensions with Beijing over Lithuania's warming ties with Taipei, which prompted China to unleash a strict trade embargo. Referring to Taiwan as, quote, a democratic country, Yansa told Indian public broadcaster Dorshan that Slovenia and Taiwan are, quote, working on establishing an exchange of representatives. Now, it goes on. He's deeply critical of China in that interview. I'll leave the original interview down below as well. It's quite far reaching. It talks about how China was secretive during the opening stages of the pandemic. He's really critical of what's happening with Hong Kong and the Uyghur Muslims. So he is taking a strong principled stance alongside Lithuania and ending Lithuania's diplomatic isolation vis-a-vis uh, -vis Beijing, for the first time, another EU country is standing shoulder to shoulder, sharing the same foreign policy towards Taiwan. So, of course, a lot of due praise needs to go to the Slovenian Prime Minister for taking this stance. So far, the EU had provided lukewarm nominal support, but none showed any interest in duplicating Lithuania's approach. All they said was Lithuania as a sovereign EU member had a right to engage in its own foreign policy free of coercion. Fair enough, but it speaks much louder to adopt Lithuania's position. Now, the question is, does this mean that the entire EU is about to break for Lithuania? Well, this comes as an interesting juncture in the relationship between Lithuania and Taiwan. Taiwan has moved strongly to backfill Lithuania's economy and show that Lithuania will benefit economically from its relations with Taiwan, despite the backlash from China. So the next article I have on this is in the Financial Review. It's a few days old, but it really speaks to the investment. It says Taiwan has set up a 1 billion US dollar credit fund for Lithuania as it steps up support to the tiny European nation that has picked a fight with Beijing. The fund will support up to a half a dozen sectors of the Lithuanian economy, potentially including semiconductors, which we'll come back to, biotechnology, satellites, finance, and scientific research. Taiwan's National Development Council Minister Kung Ming Sin said on Tuesday. It adds to a 200 million US dollar package of Taiwanese support for Lithuanian industry and trade announced the previous week. The Taipei government has also this month undertaken to buy Lithuanian exports rejected by China. Now, as I understand it, that includes uh, Lithuanian rum that's been held up in Chinese ports. Uh, I'm really looking forward to trying it. I really like rum. I'm not much of a beer drinker, so I'm excited that there is Baltic alcohol I can look forward to. Anyway, it goes on. Uh, this is quote. Whichever companies from Taiwan and Lithuania are interested in investment projects or joint ventures in Lithuania can apply for investment funds and credit loans, Taiwanese media quoted Mr. Kung as saying. Taiwan is looking to bolster Lithuania's so far unyielding resistance to China's campaign of economic and diplomatic pressure following the opening of a Taiwanese representative office in Vilnius last November. Now, we'll leave it there. The issue of semiconductors is a real headline here because until now, only 
Taiwan's strategic patrons, the United States and Japan, have gained Taiwanese semiconductor IP. France, Germany for decades has been seeking to be able to produce semiconductors within their own territory using Taiwanese technologies, but have been consistently rejected. Taiwan has said completely unprovoked, that they will be investing in semiconductor production in Lithuania. Now, this would be a real challenge because Lithuania lacks that high-end technology IP and tech expertise necessary to duplicate these factories. Nevertheless, with Taiwanese committed support and tutelage, uh, there is no reason that over the longer term, Lithuania could develop Taiwanese semiconductors for export around Europe, completely cutting France and Germany out of the market. And this all speaks to the calculus that Slovenia can also affordably make. Uh, like Lithuania, it doesn't come to this with direct dependence on China for its economy. Bilateral trade is remarkably low. And yet when you've got a wealthy island of 20-something million people willing to invest in countries that support them diplomatically and they seeing the rewards that Lithuania are about to enjoy, uh, it makes it much more palatable for the Slovenians to say, we too will open diplomatic relations with Taiwan, uh, knowing that Taiwan will have their back, as will the United States, in cushioning any economic effect that the Chinese attempt to exert. Now, this equally makes it an open question whether or not this is the break for Lithuania that we would expect and hope for among the other EU member states. First of all, if other EU countries are more economically dependent on China, that makes it far more difficult for them to pick this kind of fight. Also, the more EU countries that adopt Lithuania's position and elevate uh, Taiwan's diplomatic status abroad, the more dispersed Taiwan's economic support for these countries is going to have to be. Unlike China or the United States, Taiwan isn't this massive global economy. It is a wealthy island. It has 20-something million people, a first world economy. Uh, it can do major things for small players. But if you have half the EU suddenly opening trade offices with Taiwan, Taiwan does not have the economic weight to be able to offer these kinds of incentives and support across the board. So for the other EU countries, a lot of this will have to be for moral reasons for what it sees to be in the best interest of the EU as a whole in acting in solidarity with some of its smaller members. However, the more countries that do this, the easier it is to bring others on board. That's why this first mover of Slovenia is so important because the third country, the fourth country, it's going to be easier for them to stand up to China because it's going to be harder for China to punish all of these countries and also runs the risk of backing in the rest of the EU when you've got a sizable proportion of the membership all being affected by Chinese trade embargoes. In short, it means that China is likely to fail in its effort to isolate Lithuania diplomatically and economically and bring a magnifying glass to China's behavior on the international stage, whether it be vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan or Hong Kong, all the Uyghurs, all the South China Sea, and make many other countries braver in standing up to China, given that this tiny little country, Lithuania, has managed to do this and that others are starting to support it as well. But it is by no means over. After all, China can play the same game as Taiwan. China has a much bigger economy and it can offer carrots and sticks with the best of them. It can say, look, if you do not elevate Taiwan, if you respect the one China policy the way we unilaterally interpret it, uh, then we will give you special access, special investment to a level vastly greater than Taiwan can, particularly for those bigger economies. This means that Germany and France will still be reluctant to back in Lithuania the way Slovenia has done. But nevertheless, this could mean that Slovakia, the other Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, and so forth, they could be the next to move. And if they do, we'll be in a whole new ball game. What do you think? Do you think Slovenia's move is isolated, that China will be able to punish them in the same way that they've punished Lithuania? 
Do you think that Taiwan's uh, incentives for Lithuania was one of the motivators for Slovenia, or is it just the fact that the Prime Minister Janusz Janša has adopted a principled foreign policy position looking at the facts? Do you think that other states will be able to back in Lithuania and adopt the same policy now that Slovenia is moving, or is this just something that's going to fizzle out? I will continue to cover it, but leave your opinions down below. I would love to hear them. And thank you very much for tuning in for this episode. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.